Imagine this, you're 20 years older, but you're waking up with what feels like limitless energy. You look in the mirror and you look fantastic, healthy and confident. Now imagine the opposite. You wake up 20 years older, but you feel unmotivated, tired, exhausted, and you even struggle with basic everyday tasks. The choices you make today define tomorrow, next week, next month, and even 20 years from now. And while you genuinely believe you have absolutely no time to work out, neglecting exercise, is only going to make you unhealthier and unhappier. But the good news is, it doesn't have to be like this. So in this video today, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on how to always find time to work out, no matter how busy your schedule is. Let's get into it. So first things first, we actually need to reset our mindset. Everything that we think today and all of our habits are basically an amalgamation of everything we've done and been told previously in our lives. A lot of the people around us neglect their own health and decide not to exercise. And in turn, we think that that is a good way to live, even though deep down we know that maybe that's not true. When we tell ourselves or others, I don't have any time today to exercise, that's usually not really true. And by the way, I totally understand that you might have some really serious responsibilities. You might be a single parent. You might be balancing three jobs while doing all of these things. Your life is different from mine. So please take my advice today with a grain of salt. So I just want to make you aware that I completely understand that going forwards. A really helpful and impactful exercise we can do to reframe how we think about exercise and how much time it takes is using a technique that Tony Robbins invented called limiting beliefs. And essentially you interrogate yourself on whether it's true or not that you don't have enough time to work out. I want you to take yourself to a quiet place where you're not going to be disturbed. Close your eyes and I need you to ask yourself a few questions. One of them is, do I really not have enough time to exercise? Or is this just a limiting belief? Is it that saying I don't have time to exercise allows me to avoid the uncomfortable? Is it that I desperately want time to exercise but I feel unmotivated to? Do I really know I have time to exercise if I just optimized my schedule or routine a bit? Then ask yourself a few more questions like those and be brutally honest with yourself here. And I can tell you're the sort of person who wants to find time to work out, hence why you're watching this video right now. But by asking yourself these questions, you might have a bit of a breakthrough. You might realize that, oh, when I tell myself I don't have enough time to work out, this is just a bit of a limiting belief. Start to identify as a person who who cares about their health, who cares about working out, who enjoys working out and wants to do more of it. By shifting your identity, you're more likely going to stick to the habit of working out and become a healthier and fitter person. So real quick, I just want to explain why you do have time to work out. I want you to try a technique that I learned from David Goggins, who is an incredible person. In his book, Can't Hurt Me, he talks about how he optimizes his daily routine to ensure that he has enough time to fit everything in. So I want you to go get a calendar. Google Calendar works very well for this. And I want you to block in everything that you do in your day currently. First things first, if you really are this busy, your calendar should be full, but most likely you'll find some gaps here and there where you're not actually busy. So that's already a good sign that these are little gaps that you can fit exercise into. Then I want you to go about your day following your calendar of all the blocks of work and family and all the events you have in there and see if they really do take as long as you say. And if they do, then that's fine. We'll come back to this later. What I'm trying to get at here is you don't need these 30 to 60 minute sessions of brutal exercise. Exercise and working out can fit into a window as small as one or two minutes. You could get down on the ground right now and do 30 seconds of burpees and you don't have any excuse here because you don't have to get in your car or get the bus to go to a gym. You can do this stuff at home. And if you're strapped for any ideas, this video isn't about home workouts and things like that. Do some research on YouTube, online from some trusted sources, and you'll see that there is a plethora of home workouts that you can fit into small windows of time. You can start running, which is what this channel is all about. I've made a huge amount of videos about how you can become a self-disciplined runner, how you can run every day, how you can make time for running. So go check my channel out and watch some of those videos. I will do 100 push-ups every single 
single day. But I won't do them all in one go. I'll do like 40 here and 40 there. And I wasn't starting off doing 40 all in one go. No, I was starting off doing like 10, increasing them to 11 and 12. Celebrate the small wins here. If you use a technique by James Clear from the book Atomic Habits, habit stacking, you stack the habit of working out to a habit that already exists, like getting up to fill your water bottle up, then you will fit in these mini workouts throughout your day. And if every time you get up to fill your water bottle up or go to the bathroom, you do one minute of exercise, well, by the end of the day, you may have done 10 minutes of exercise. 10 minutes a day of exercise is going to put your health in a way better condition than, honestly, the majority of people, but also it's gonna make you way healthier than you were before. Two minutes of exercise is better than no minutes of exercise. And now for the good bit, how to optimize your day to fit in working out and exercise. So remember that David Goggins calendar exercise I ran you through a few minutes ago? Well, I want you to go back to that and you've done your day just like you put in your calendar and you've experienced it, you've lived it. Now I want you to analyze this calendar like no tomorrow. I want you to go into that day of that calendar and start asking yourself, where did I procrastinate in this day? Where did I spend a little bit too long in small talk when I really didn't need to? When was I doing tasks and activities that I could actually delegate to someone or even delete entirely from my life? So just like David Goggins suggests in his book, I want you to be really brutal with these time blocks, okay? So maybe you have an hour for breakfast each morning. Could that actually be 45 minutes for breakfast each morning? And maybe you find a quicker breakfast recipe and then you've got a 15 minute period that you've just saved that could go completely to working out. How awesome is that? Be really brutal about these time slots. Cut them down a little bit in your calendar. Save five, 10, 15 minutes here and there. And before you know it, you've actually got a whole 30 minutes a day that you can work out. And once you've found that block, try and keep that block the same for every single day as best as you can because you're more likely going to stick to that time block of exercising at that time every single day. If you use habit implementation from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, it states that if you tell yourself, I'm going to work out on this day at this time at this place, you're way more likely to stick to it. Now I briefly touched on this, but use the Eisenhower matrix. You split your to-do list into four boxes. You've got these columns, important and not important and urgent and not urgent. And essentially you want to put these things in the right places. As you can see from my Notion one, it's a template I got from this incredibly talented person. Whatever falls into the box of important and urgent, you do right now. Whatever falls into the box of important but not urgent, then you can schedule to do later. And whatever falls into the box of urgent but not important, you delegate to someone else. And don't underestimate that tool here. Even if you are a solopreneur, you can still delegate using the people in your life as long as you are respectful about it. But whatever falls into the not important and not urgent, you eradicate and delete completely from your life if possible. And what this will do, a bit like the calendar exercise, is it will make you take a hard look at your to-do list. You'll quickly realize what's actually important in your life and what you've been wasting time in doing unimportant busy work tasks. The goal of this is that it's going to save you even more time that you could spend working out. And hopefully what this is doing is you're saving so much time, you don't just have enough time to work out now, but now you've got time to spend with your kids, with your partner. Essentially the moral of this is eliminate distractions as much as possible. Just like the book Essentialism, if you don't choose how to spend your time, other people will choose for you. It's all well and good that we found plenty of time in the day now to work out. But when you get here, you quickly realize that, oh, working out, it takes a bit of self-discipline. It's tough. So how do you make it easy? Well, first of all, I want you to have a bias for action. Don't think, just do the exercise. When that workout block hits, don't think about how you feel about it because at first you'll probably feel reluctant. You'll probably feel like working out is way more uncomfortable than chilling in bed watching Netflix right now. So I'm just gonna pass. Don't give in to comfort. That's going to ensure that you work out more, which is gonna help you and your body. So have a bias for action. And if you need to, use the technique by Mel Robbins, which is the five second rule. In your head or out loud, you go five, four, three, two, one. Once you get to one, you have to go work out. It sounds really simple, but by going five, four, three, two, one, your body, like a rocket ship, feels compelled to go do the action that you're avoiding. But if you even spend one second thinking to yourself, oh, I don't want to do it, you're way more likely 
to not. And the last tip is create a group chat with friends and family who are in a similar position to you who also want to find time to work out more and try and get together as much as you can to work out as a group. When you create a tight foxhole of people who work out together, you're way more likely to stick to it because you're gonna hold each other accountable. And even if you don't work out together in person, having a group chat where you go, hey mate, did you work out today at the time we said? You're gonna stick to it way more because now you've got that social pressure. So right now you have a choice. You can take the steps today to turn exercise into a positive habit that lasts. And trust me, if you take the first step right now, you're going to be so glad you created this habit in the future. So if you've made it this far, I can tell that you are the sort of person who cares about creating a habit that lasts. And that's why I've created this video for you on how I've managed to run every single day without getting burnt out. Go watch it now. You will find absolutely game-changing tips that you can use alongside the tips you've learned today to absolutely revolutionize your life and improve your health for the better. And if this video helped you, hit that subscribe button. It genuinely helps me improve my content heaps. Thank you so much for watching. Get out there, get running, and I'll see you out there. Take care. Bye-bye.